Our meeting is called to order. Please call the roll. Mr. Buckner? Here. Reverend Campbell? Here. Mr. Gilstrap? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Vice Mayor Miller? Here. Mr. Raleigh? Here. Mayor Saunders? Here. Mr. Shanks? Here. Mr. Vogler? Here. Please stand for the indication and the pledge to remain standing given tonight by Council Member Mr. Larry Campbell, Jr. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this great day that you allowed <coughs> us to wake up and to see. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for the great city of Danville, for all of the employees who serve the community, and to render the services to make everything efficient. We thank you for our council, the mayor, the city manager. We pray for your wisdom and knowledge tonight as we shall make major decisions that will affect our people. In your name we pray, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Under special recognition, I'd like to uh, present a resolution, and I would like to ask Mr. Johnny Mayo, member of State Governing Board, Virginia Organizing Association. Will you come forward, please? And I read this, whereas Virginia Organizing, a nonpartisan statewide grassroots organization dedicated to challenging injustice by empowering people in local communities to address issues that affect the quality of their lives. And whereas Virginia Organizing encouraged the participation of those who traditionally had little or no voice in our society, whether they be individuals or groups throughout the Commonwealth, to bring about change by working together and building relationships. And whereas among the organization's statement of belief is a belief that all people should be treated fairly and with dignity in all aspects of life, regardless of race, class, gender, religion, sexual orientation, age, ability, or country of origin. And the organization also believes in the enhancement and celebration of diversity in our communities and in our state. And whereas the organization believes that community, economic, social, environmental policy should be developed with the greatest input from the people it is meant to serve, and that the policy should promote, should promote, celebrate, and sustain the human and natural resources of Virginia. And whereas leaders, members, and staff of the organization work tirelessly to connect children, low-income residents, immigrants, veterans, retirees, people with disabilities, and other unrepresented groups to the resources that they deserve and need. And whereas the organization serves as an anchor for more than 30 program groups working in partnership to support additional work in the areas of the environment, human rights, housing, transportation, and community support. And whereas the Danville chapter celebrated a band the box victory that removed criminal history question from city job application, promoted weatherization standards for low-income rental properties, and organized unemployed residents in the city of Danville, in addition to numerous efforts on statewide and national issues. And whereas this year, the organization is celebrating 20 years of grassroots organizing and bringing about real change for real people through countless campaigns to improve the quality of life for all Virginians. Now, therefore, I, Sherman and Thomas Mayor, City of Danville, do hereby recognize and commend Virginia Organizing on its 20th anniversary and encourage others to learn about and support this organization and its efforts. Given that in my hand, the 20th day of January, 2015, Chairman and Thunders, Mayor. Thank you, sir, for all you did. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. I'd like to have some comments. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and city council members, and we gladly received that proclamation on this day. 
And I want to also thank uh, my child person. She sit on the state governing board with me, uh, Sandra Cook. She's from Richmond, Virginia. She's wheelchair bound, um, barren, and uh, she does a great job for her. And I also want to thank all of my members that came out today. I'd like to ask you, like to ask you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Would y'all please stand up? Uh, Mr. Mayor, like to ask you, stand, sir? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Back to you, sir. And as you mentioned, we worked on a lot of issues uh, concerning the citizens of Virginia, or Danville, Virginia. And the, most of the people that we come in contact with are people who feel that they don't have a right or a voice in the issues that go on around the city. And we try to get them to come together and discuss the issues and try to come to talk to the right people. Most of the time, you all see what can we get done to help their lives. And we really enjoy doing this work. And we really also enjoy coming to talk to y'all because y'all always treat us fairly. So we want to thank y'all for that. And uh, also, on this 20th anniversary, we'd like to invite anyone who wants to come and join Virginia Organizing to please contact Nick Bellinger or myself. You can call Nick at 434-709-4953, or you can contact me, Johnny Mayo, at 770-3213. That's 434 770-3213. And also, uh, the issues we were working on, like banning the box, it was a, a campaign, campaign that we uh, was trying to help a lot of people getting out of jail. And they had issues, they had felons on the record, and we wanted to get them to apply for a city job and don't want them to ask that question. And you all accommodated us on that and got that passed. So the people do realize that they can get things changed if they just sit down and talk to them. So we appreciate that. And also, uh, we're having a meeting, a forum, let's see, for children health care in Virginia. It's going to be uh, this Wednesday, January 28th from 6 to 7.30. And we would also like to invite any of the members or anyone in the public to come out and join us on that. Uh, we're going to be discussing uh, Medicaid expansion, the CHIP program, the FAMIS program. You know, we think it's very important to keep our kids healthy and insured. And since we can get Medicaid expansion passed in this state, we want to do all we can to make sure that everyone's covered. And me personally, I know back in the 90s, when I first come to the city, Danville ranked the fourth place in the country to live. I don't know if you all remember that, but we was ranked, they did a ranking on cities to live in, small town, and we were ranked number fourth. And I think it would be great if we could do the things that it take to get back to that ranking, which is going to include education. I think also we, could, we need a new school. That school, we've been had, GW's been here, and they teaching the old, old stuff in there. With this new technology, we need to train our kids for the future. I work at a company called IKEA, and it's all, they have state-of-the-art equipment, and that they have a training center set up at the arcade building. That's what they do. They train all their workers from the ground up on this equipment to make sure that they can uh, compete and keep a good job. So I think that's, if we could go back to being ranked highly, like the fourth in this, in this uh, country, that could do Virginia's good. And in closing, I just once again want to thank everybody for, for this proclamation. It's a great day for Virginia organizing, and we really appreciate y'all. Thank you. Thank you. And let me just say that we know that you do a lot in our city and, and in the state. But with regards to the city of Danville, we know that you partner with the city to help a lot of people sign up for weatherization. Yes. The lower the utility bill. Big help to a lot of people, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Under communication, anyone wish to speak on any matter not on the agenda will be heard at this time. If you wish to speak on any agenda item, you will be heard when the item is considered. Anyone wish to speak? Welcome, sir. Thank you, Mayor Saunders. Good evening, members of council. Good evening. Mr. King, uh, staff members of the city of Danville. My name is Davis Montgomery. I'm the district manager for Duke Energy Corporation. 
as I have in the past, I come by about once a month to provide you on any updates. Um, I dare say my update tonight won't be as long as my introduction, so I'll go, I'll go ahead and get to it and save you some time. Very little has happened since the last time I was here before you, but one, one item of significance would be the EPA ruling of coal ashes being non-hazardous. That happened on December the 19th. This was something that had been in front of EPA for quite some time, uh, waiting for a ruling on it, and they finally made that on December the 19th. What does that ruling mean? It basically says that EPA is going to pass the, uh, the overview and purview of the coal ash ponds to the states. Uh, they're just going to provide some guidelines, but it's going to be up to the states to decide what they're going to do each and every individual state, as opposed to the agency itself overseeing that and taking care of any issues that may arise out of it. So they're going to defer to the states. In terms of some of the industries out there that were interested in that, recycling industry, which of course uses some of this material for cement, uh, wallboard, uh, paint, and some other building materials, uh, it effectively means that that will continue to take place. As I reported to you at one point in time, we recycle a little over 60% of the coal ash that's produced today. So it keeps that industry alive and well. Uh, other things that have happened, as we periodically do, we had an inspections of the dam, uh, dams at our Dan River plant, both the primary and the secondary dam, uh, the discharge tower and some of the other equipment that we have there. This was done by an outside agency. No immediate threats were identified. They just recommended that we continue the ongoing surveillance and monitoring that we do today. There is a complete study uh, or complete report on that on our website, but that, uh, that is done every year and done by an outside agency. The Dan River Stakeholders team continues to meet. Uh, their next meeting is this Thursday. At our last meeting, we had Miles Bartos, who has talked with you folks, uh, come and present some information to that group. They had a good exchange back and forth of questions and answers. They have identified some priorities and some projects. And at this next meeting, which is taking place on Thursday, they're going to refine those a little bit and try and hone in on some things that they'd actually get, like to see done. So that's what will be happening this Thursday. The last thing that I have to report, excuse me, Go ahead. I'm just, I'm just to get the there. last thing that I have to report is just that we filed our coal ash excavation plans, uh, and I make the distinction, the excavation plans with NC Diener, the equivalent of Virginia DEQ, back in November. Uh, they have those plans. We have yet to hear from them in terms of complete approval, suggested changes, or anything along that line, but we continue to do our background engineering work. We continue to look at permitting that we may need to put in place, take whatever steps we can so whenever we do get the go ahead, we can move just as quickly as possible. That's it in a nutshell for me. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Since the EPA doesn't consider it hazardous waste, you know, when, when the spill occurred here, the EPA came and inspected. Now, yes, does that mean the next time it happens, they won't? No, sir. It, they will still, if anything like that would ever happen again, because it was in a waterway, it becomes the purview of the federal government. So that's why EPA was involved. Uh, it still means that they will come. They will still do the same due diligence that they did today. Just in terms of the way the material has to be treated, um, I've heard it compared to you can basically treat it like household waste in terms of a landfill. But I think their recommendation was that it be put in the line landfill. And does this decision from EPA alter your timetable at all for moving the waste? And what is your timetable for removing all the waste from that plant away from the river into safer yes, areas? Sir. EPA is not involved in that. Uh, that becomes between us and the state of North Carolina. As you know, North Carolina is the first state to pass a coal ash management act. Uh, it outlines the closing of those ponds, not the excavation. We had a direction from the governor through NC Diener that they wanted us to provide the excavation plans, which we did in November. Uh, if we can stay on track with the timeline, our, our goal was to start moving material by May of, 20, of this year. I keep forgetting we're in 2015, but of May of this year. That was our goal. But of course, we, we have to get the okay so we can move ahead. And finish by? 2019. 2019. That, uh, that, that and three other sites have to be closed by August of 2019. That's the deadline. Thank you. Yes, Other question, comments from Mr. Montgomery? Right. Mr. Gilstrap. Yes, sir. Could you clarify again the EPA rating? I mean, the uh, uh, hazardous, non hazardous versus hazardous. Uh, they ruled it as being non hazardous waste. <laughs> non-hazardous but still not necessarily safe last thing i want to do is try and speak for the epa <laughs> uh, uh, there's probably more pages there and then there is in all the well if you had encyclopedias when you kid there's probably more pages in that ruling than there was in that whole book of encyclopedias uh, 
I can't speak to that, sir. I just well, know that the well, ruling well, was. Well, the question is, they didn't rule it safe. They just ruled it non-hazardous. I mean, if it's safe, then why remove it? Well, and, and I think that's some of the things that they're going to leave up to the state to decide. But you're right. They, they did not say it was safe. They said it was non-hazardous. But it was compared, and I would say this came from some of the environmental community, that that means you can treat it basically like you do household waste. I don't think that's true, but uh, I'd have to read the full order to make sure. Okay. But yes, sir, it, the ruling was actually non-hazardous. Thank you, Mayor. I'm sorry yeah. I stepped around that, but I, that's I really right. don't know. I understand. That. Mr. Buckner. So it will still be cleaned up in the Eden location? Absolutely. And, and, and everywhere in North Carolina, will it still be cleaned up? Absolutely. That was part of the Coal Ash Management Act that was passed in August, that they, those ponds will all be closed. Right. Uh, then the, all the other, the high priority I understand they'll be closed, but will they be cleaned up? And the excavation uh, act, uh, or the ex excavation plans absolutely determine that those plants will be, that material will be moved away from the river. Yes, sir. absolutely. That goes without question. We're just, we're just trying to stay within the timeline. It's a very aggressive timeline. Right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Other questions or comments? Thank you, sir. As always, I appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Anyone else wish to speak <clears throat> on matters not on the agenda? Thank you. Is the motion to approve the minutes of our December 16th meeting? Mr. Campbell, Mr. Volger, second. Discussion of the motion? Please call the roll. Mr. Buckner. Aye. Right. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Gilstrap? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Raleigh? Aye. Mayor Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Vogel? Aye. So, Richard, we're adopting an ordinance amending year 2020 land use map from multifamily residential and retire <coughs> retirement living to community service and rezoning from multifamily residential to a highway retail commercial district. Open the public hearing. Anyone wish to speak? Anyone wish to speak? Yes, ma'am. Good evening, Mayor, members evening. of the council. My name is Betty Johnson Mile, and I own the property located at 995 Piney Forest Road, known as Johnson's Trailer Court. I'd be happy to answer any questions that anyone might have. Any questions from council members? That is the, the trailer park next door to uh, Golden, Golden Skillet. Skillet. Okay. Yes, sir. Other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else wish to speak? Anyone else? Close the public hearing. Council, your pleasure. Uh, Mr. Shanks. Yes, Mayor. I move for adoption of ordinance amending the year 2020 land use map from MR Multifamily Residential and RL Retirement Living to CS Community Service and rezoning from MR Multifamily Residential to THRC Highway Retail Commercial District, 995 Piney Forest Road, parcel ID number 53733 and parcel ID number 73020, otherwise known as grid 1811 block 05, parcel 21, and grid 1811 block 05, parcel 12, respectively, of the City of Danville, Virginia Zoning District map. To their second, Mr. Raleigh. Discussion of the motion? Please call the roll. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Gilstrap? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Raleigh? Aye. Mayor Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Three, I'm adopting an ordinance amending 2020 land use plan from suburban single family residential to community service and rezoning from suburban residential to conditional highway retail commercial. Open the public hearing. Anyone wish to speak? Anyone wish to speak? Close the public hearing. Council pleasure, Mr. Campbell. This may I move for the ordinance amending, move for the adoption of the ordinance amending 2020 land use plan from the SSR suburban single family residential to CS commercial community service and rezoning from an S-R suburban residential to conditional R H R C highway retail commercial a.7011 acres of parcel ID 70928 fronting on Riverside Drive, otherwise known as A.7011 acres portion of the grid 9707 block 006, parcel 1 of the City of Danville zoning district map. Okay, a second, Mr. Fogler. Discussion on the motion. 
Uh, Mr. Rollick. Uh, Mr. Gilly, can I ask a couple of questions? I see a number of things have been proffered. This is a property that we looked at when we only had six council members, I think, present. And on the proffers, we have uh, kennels, commercial, proffered out. We have veterinary clinics, okay. Uh, does, that, does that mean that no dog, no animals could stay overnight or what? what did they could not operate a commercial kennel at that location. They couldn't. It's the same proffers as the property next to it that was approved by city council um, late last year. So they're they're matching the conditions, and, and you know they cannot have that kind of thing at that spot. And, and that what that means you can't have animals overnight. Correct. And because of the size of the property, apartments cannot go. It will be highway retail commercial, so you right. can't have apartments because in the highway retail district. Very good. And with the same conditions as the adjacent property, mm -hmm. if they need to reconfigure lots, they would have that ability. Okay. Question. Okay, it's going to be a veterinary clinic. No. No. It's not. Okay. What's it going to be? It, uh, it, it was right just now, something just, that wasn't proffered out. It, okay. It, it, it's got a potential for a number of different uses. They're just setting it up for highway retail commercial. They had the adjacent property, which rezoned last year. They wanted to add some additional <laughs> property. They need to match the conditions on it, and then they can market it for commercial property okay. with these stipulations. All right. Ms. Shanks. The, uh, <clears throat> I, don't, I don't have any problem with the zoning. Is it, the depth of the lot's only 100 feet. Is that, uh, are you satisfied with that in terms of the buildable lot? It would be a buildable lot, according to the zoning code. Uh, it would be a smaller building. But this also, again, allows for the reconfiguration of the adjacent property so they could adjust, they could consolidate, they would have the same conditions. That was one of the things we wanted to work with them on is making sure that both lots shared the same conditions so they could consolidate or reconfigure as necessary. One last question on that. <clears throat> is there a, how does outdoor advertising fit into this zoning? It is not permitted. Uh, the city doesn't, hasn't permitted outdoor advertising since at least the 1970s. Uh, there was an existing billboard on that facility which has been removed and would not be allowed to be re-erected. Thank you. Further discussion? Further discussion? Mr. I'd Arnold. like to, Mr. May, I'd like to just go on record. I think uh, the gentleman before that came, came before us that night, Mr. White, I believe it was. Oh, okay. That was for the apartments. Uh, yeah, I, I, I almost want to apologize to him. <laughs> uh, he had a good good plan, but the neighborhood, that's the reason I voted against the neighborhood was so against it. But now one of the neighbors bought the land and now they want to do some things with it, but there's no seems to be no opposition. I just want to go on record, I apologize to Mr. White. I probably made a mistake when I voted last time. Thank you. Further discussion, Mr. Shanks. Yes, uh, I <clears throat> I agree. That was uh, an unfortunate zoning case and the gentleman had a good plan. Uh, I guess that goes a long way in saying something about peace in the valley when another zoning case comes up and they've certainly got peace in the valley on this one. But uh, uh, I'm glad to see the land's going to be used. I, I thought during that case that you were referring to, Mr. Riley, I thought that highway retail commercial would be the least desired on that piece of property. But apparently with the uh, change of ownership around the property and uh, uh, there's peace in the valley so I don't see any problem with the case. Thank you. Okay. Yeah um, I just want to follow up on, on what's been said by two previous councilmen and um, I supported that project. I was one of the, the few that had approved it that night. We were I think we only had six council members and I, I do feel bad you know that it happened the way that it did and I think we made some changes after that in terms of waiting time for appeals. It, didn't uh, unfortunately for that gentleman wasn't able to help him but in terms of the future then I too thought you know residential would be more preferable to to retail but you know if the uh, the neighbors around it are, are okay with it I mean I'm, I'm okay with the development so uh, you know I support this and um, I guess it's a learnable lesson for all of us thank you man. further discussion please call the roll Mr. Gilstrap aye Mr. Jones aye Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Raleigh? Aye. Mayor Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shank? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Federation adopting an ordinance amending Chapter 41 
entitled Zoning Ordinance of the Code of City of Danville, 1986. Open the public hearing. Anyone wish to speak? Anyone wish to speak? Close the public hearing. Mr. Vogel. Mr. Mayor, I move we adopt an ordinance amending Chapter 41 entitled Zoning Ordinance of the Code of the City of Danville, Virginia, 1986, as amended more specifically Article 3M entitled HRC, Highway Retail Commercial, Section C entitled Uses Permitted by Special Use Permit to Allow Wholesale Sales by Special Use Permit. Okay. Second, Mr. Buckner. Okay, discussion on the motion? Please call the roll. Mr. Jones. Aye. Vice Mayor Miller. Aye. Mr. Raleigh. Aye. Mayor Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Gilstrap? Aye. First, I'm adopting an ordinance granting a special use permit to allow for wholesale sales at 335 Mount Cross Road. Open the public hearing. Anyone wish to speak? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Hello, Mr. Mayor. My name is Will Leggett, and I own the property that I'm asking for a special permit. There is a local business that would like to enlarge and move to our facility where hopefully they could do more volume and hire more people. And that's why I'm asking for this and would be glad to answer any questions that any of y'all might have. Any questions from Mr. Leggett? Thank you, sir. Thank and you. hello to you as well, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Anyone else? Close the public hearing. Mr. Gilstrap. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, I move for adoption ordinance granting a special use permit to allow for wholesale sales in accordance with Article 3.M, Section C, Item 25 of the Code of the City of Danville, Virginia, 1986, as amended at 335 Mountain Cross Road. Second, Mr. Jones. Discussion on the motion. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Miller. Aye. Mr. Raleigh. Aye. Mayor Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Gilstrap? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Federation for adopting an ordinance rezoning from multi-family residential and threshold residential to attached residential district. Open the public hearing. Anyone wish to speak? Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Gretchen Clark with Reynolds Clark Development and we're assisting J. Ray Investments with this project. Um, we have designed a layout that encompasses about 30 units, attached dwelling units, um, with private internal roads for the project. Um, it enters off of Hermitage Drive, and I can answer any other questions that you might have about the project. Okay, any question? Any question? Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Anyone else? Close the public hearing. Council, your pleasure. Uh, Mr. Shanks. Uh, yes, Mayor. I move for adoption of ordinance rezoning from MR multifamily residential to TR threshold residential. I'm sorry, and TR threshold resident, residential to AR attached resident, residential district. A 1.720 acre portion of parcel 53617 otherwise known as 1.72 acre parcel, portion of grid 605, block 01, parcel four, all four, 0.462 acres of parcel number 60518, otherwise known as a 5.437 acre portion of grid 605, block 01, parcel 08 of the city of Danville, Virginia zoning district map. Okay, second by Mr. Raleigh. Discussion on the motion? Please call the roll. Mr. Raleigh? Aye. Mayor Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Gilstrap? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Communication, Mr. Manager? Aye, not this evening, thank you. Okay, Mr. Turney? Uh, nothing this evening, Mr. Mayor. Madam Clerk? Nothing, sir. Please call the roll. Mr. Buckner? Yeah, I just want to say congratulations to uh, Virginia Organizing for 20 successful years. I hope for many, many, many more years for those guys. Um, also want to send a shout out to my nephew who's uh, going for, uh, he's getting interviewed by Duke tomorrow to uh, play basketball for him. Okay. Hopefully a full scholarship, fingers crossed. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Reverend Campbell? 
Yes, uh, there was a wonderful day yesterday for the Martin Luther King celebration at Haven University. It was a wonderful crowd, a good turnout, and for all of the activities for the holiday over the weekend was excellent. I'd just like to talk for a couple minutes on the subject of regionalization and for like for council to consider and for the city manager how we can develop and be more effective in reference to uh, the approach of regionalization for national exposure and bringing more industries and businesses within our area. For an example, when we think about Martinsville racing, racing that is going on in that city, Danville hotels are filled. We look at VIRO, when they have their race, the hotels are filled. I just wonder, I don't think that we are maximizing our potential we look at Danville being 43,000 citizens, and uh, if we can mobilize with Henry County, uh, South Boston, Pennsylvania, Yanceville, and look how we can be more, in reference to numbers, we may get a better uh, perspective and interest of the mega park. I think that we are just not limiting our, pot our potential in reference to the growth of our region. So I am asking council and along with the city manager of, that we can constructively look at how we can uh, be more effective in reference to um, this idea of regionalization. Every race we have hotels or field that's increased our tax base. I just don't think that we're doing enough to maximize that concept. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Gilstrap. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I too would like to uh, say I, I really enjoyed the uh, luncheon hosted by Averett University yesterday and the motivational speech by Dr. Davis. I thought it was uh, very, not only very well attended, but very inspirational. I really also enjoyed the youth activities at the North Theater yesterday. I am so very proud of the youth in Danville and the good things that they're doing, and this film highlighted the good things that the, the uh, kids in our region are doing. I think the title of it is, I Am uh, the, Danville, uh, the uh, Dan River Region. But they had youth from uh, all the county schools, from Caswell County and from Danville, and it highlighted, the, <coughs> highlighted our kids. I thought it was great. And I appreciate Justin Farrell for doing that and the Regional Foundation for funding it. And I hope we all get to see that movie. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Jones. Uh, Mr. Mayor, started on Sunday night when I went by Shiloh and to see the number of people who after they marched, and I was actually, I didn't march, but I actually had an opportunity to go inside and to hear uh, Reverend Fuller, when he got up to speak, talk about the love for our community and to hear that and then the following morning, there was a breakfast at the Stratford, and then the wonderful event at Avid University. Uh, I'd like to share something that was shared at Avid at the breakfast. There are a lot of people who, Mr. Mayor, don't get a chance to get out for some reason or another. But this pledge was so beautiful when I heard Bishop Campbell reading it on behalf of Avid and the community. It says, it's called the Birmingham Pledge. And it reads, I believe that every person has worth as an individual. I believe that every person is entitled to dignity and respect regardless of race or color. I believe that every thought and every act of racial prejudice is harmful. If it is my thought or act, then it is harmful to me as well as to others. Therefore, from this day forward, I will strive daily to eliminate racial prejudice from my thoughts and actions. I will discourage racial prejudice by others at every opportunity. I will treat all people with dignity and respect and I will strive daily to honor this pledge, knowing that the world would be a better place because of my effort. And as Mr. Gilstrap stated, once we left there to go to the North Theater and see the number of young people, um, Wendy Goods, uh, Wendy Everson from the Dan River Regional Foundation and Justin Farrell did a phenomenal job. Justin told us at the Avid event that he said, I just hope at least 200 people come out. And with Mr. Vogel and myself, Mr. Gilstrap, it was jam-packed. And to see the number of young people there, it was an awesome event. And I say kudos as well. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Thank you. Vice Mayor Miller. Thank you, Councilman Jones, for reading the Birmingham Pledge. As you remember, Danville United's first meeting we had was uh, mm -hmm. a man who'd written the Birmingham Pledge came up and, and spoke on that. And that's become our motto with Danville United. And again, we encourage you to participate in Danville United. Uh, thank you, Virginia Organizing. Appreciate all you've done. Uh, Virginia Organizing gives a voice to those who otherwise would not have a voice. And the events this weekend were great. Uh, the Southern Christian Leadership Dinner on uh, Saturday night. Excellent meeting, excellent speaker. Uh, the Averett uh, uh, dinner yesterday or luncheon. And then uh, the uh, March Against Violence. People came from South Boston, Martinsville, Richmond, not to protest, but just to come down and march against violence. It's an annual march we have here. And it's, it's just a great thing to walk with others. And uh, again, we're not protesting against anything. We're just want to stop the violence that's going on. As John Lennon said, give peace a chance. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Raleigh. And, and just, Avid's appreciative of the good turnout yesterday. It was over 350 people and uh, good message and uh, very appropriate. Thank everybody for coming. Mr. Shanks. I, uh, I just have one, one item this evening. I just uh, I feel very positive and the fact that today we had four rezoning cases, local business people, investors, uh, who see fit to invest in our community, and uh, they're growing their businesses, they're improving their property, they're investing in property, and some of them are already talking about companies that'll be hiring and growing, creating new positions. So. It's been a long time since we've had four, I think it's been a long time since we've had four or five cases, and maybe this is a very good sign, but I want to say thank you to everyone that uh, has been here tonight in front of us to uh, make an investment in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Vogler. Yeah, I first of all, just uh, want to make note, Councilman Jones wanted me to point out that those who are interested in taking the Birmingham Pledge, you can go to birminghampledge.org and you can do so there. Um, Councilman Campbell may have read my mind because I also wanted to talk about regional cooperation and uh, regional tourism, the possibility of a regional tourism director. There was a uh, summit that was held not too long ago where representatives from the state came down and met with people from the city and the county and that was one of the things that they talked about was the need to maximize uh, tourism and to maximize the, the assets that we have here and to find a way to do that. So I hope uh, in the coming months, especially when both of us are talking about our budgets, the city and the county, um, that we can possibly have a joint meeting between the two of us and, and look at possibilities uh, for that. And I, and I think that it is a worthwhile cause. I can tell you, you know, not just the things that Councilman Campbell mentioned, which are important, but also, you know, the film industry in Virginia right now is huge. And I've talked to the people at the Virginia Film Office. Uh, and they're very interested in some of the things that we have in this area for filming locations. But we need a point person who can kind of oversee all of that, and that would be a part of it. Um, so I think that's a discussion that I look forward to having. I hope we will have. Uh, and I want to thank Councilman Campbell for bringing up that, that issue tonight. Uh, and lastly, I just want to say, and as mentioned by some before, you know, we had a tremendous day of events yesterday. Uh, the one in particular that, that really kind of moved me and inspired me was the event that was held at the North Theater. Um, that was really centered around our young people. Um, I wish you know, some of our school board members had been able to attend because they would have seen hundreds of uh, teenagers that were there and involved in a creative, uh, positive project. Um, and, and many of them were Danville Public School students. There were some from the county and some from North Carolina also, but a large chunk of them were Danville Public School students. And you know, I know that um, young people today, they get kind of a bad rap uh, from, from the older generation, you know, and I think that's kind of always been a time-honored tradition to, to look at the younger generation and possibly think, well, you know, the, they just, they're not as good as the generation before them. But I can tell you, it wasn't that long ago that all of us up here were teenagers, and you know, some of us more recently than others. And Thank you. <laughs> but, you know, we make mistakes. Yeah, we did. And were we perfect? No, we weren't. We're still not. Um, but like the young people today, we had hopes and dreams and aspirations of, of who we could be and what we could do. And uh, I've said it many times, I still believe, you know, Danville's best days are still in front of us, and a lot of it because of the young people that we have in this area. 
And we as elected officials, as leaders, as mentors, as adults, we need to do more to reach out to them, to engage them, to speak with them, but more importantly, listen to them. And I think that's honestly what a lot of our young people today, that's what they want. They just want to be heard, a chance to be heard. And we saw some of that yesterday. It was a, a, a great event, not just the film that was shown, but to see the talented display of, of there was poetry, there was dancing, it was just a phenomenal event. Um, and you know, those of us up here, we have the benefit of, of life experience, but the, the young people, they have the benefit of, of seeing things from a different perspective to have that unbridled optimism, to, to think thoughts that have not been spoken yet, ideas that haven't been heard, a perspective that we haven't seen. And they are our future, and I think the more that we partner with them, we can create that better tomorrow, today. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Mayor Saunders. Thank you. Congratulations again to Virginia Organizing for the work you're doing in our city, and especially the partnership in trying to help the city help those who are having some very, very difficult times. Um, it was a wonderful, I think, Dr. King weekend. In addition to the ones that have already been mentioned in terms of activities, there were several over the weekend. I think Friday evening there was one at Church on Missionary Association for young people sponsored by the SCLC. Uh, Saturday there was a banquet at uh, the Stratford Conference Center and that was sold out. Um, Sunday there were many church services regarding Dr. King's um, contribution to our country. Also Sunday evening, as mentioned, there was a march to Shiloh Baptist Church. Uh, Monday morning, the Omega Psi Phi fraternity had a breakfast at Stratford Conference Center and that was a sellout, that was a sold out. Uh, matter of fact, it turned people away, could not get in because of uh, uh, fire codes uh, in terms of crowds. Then at Averett, again, a good event there as well. And then uh, Cherry Stone had a, a nice program um, last, um, last night, the speaker from coming in from Richmond. So Dr. King's celebration uh, was really remembered all over this weekend. I hope uh, it will be remembered all year long. And I hope that we look at that history and think about the work that he did and the movement that he started and understand we should not be stuck in the 60s. It's 2015 and that work need to continue and be done with regards to bringing people together, not just in our country, but all over the world. So very uh, thankful to him and his family for what he started and I ask that we do the best we can to, to keep that up. Let me also say, we had some very tough times um, in our city in, in terms of the economy, which is now improving, and a lot of work uh, to be done. And we have some great city employees in our city, all 1,100 plus. And I want to say a special thank you to all of our employees. Regardless of what your job description says, thank you for what you do every day. You are the face of our city. You represent us well, and we thank you for doing that. Also, a special thanks to our law enforcement. We hear about law enforcement all over this country, and especially all over the world now with the issues going on. But I am very proud to say that Danville has a great department of law enforcement officers. I don't like to single people out. Again, special thanks to all of our employees. But when it comes down to the police 24-7, when we leave threatening situations, they go to it. They put their lives on the line every day, in uniform and out of uniform. So thank you all for what you do every day. Thank you for choosing the career. And a lot of people wouldn't do it but you do it because you care, and we're very, very indebted to our law enforcement. Special thanks to our chief. Really appreciate the presentation, the work session, the last meeting. I thought it was very, very helpful, and I've heard many, many positive comments from that. And um, on a more jovial uh, note, I know he has been waiting for it. I was waiting for the cheese tonight, but the uh, cheese didn't come because I had my own cheese, and, but that's okay. 
So maybe next year. Okay, Mr. Shanks, I will see you. I will see you again next year, sir. All right. Having said that, meeting adjourned. <laughs>